Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Woo! We're going to give our go reaction scores and review the film spoiler free. Then we are going to determine the final total ranking using the patented secret mate night formula, which, as everyone knows, is never wrong. Has never been never wrong defeated. Before. On the count of three, our scores based solely on enjoyment. Yeah. Subjectivity galore. Mm -hmm. I'm counting you in. Ready? Me first. Three, two, one, go. 8.7. 8.4. Whoa, let's can I just go. Say, can I just say, right? What number does that say there? Ooh. I put 8.8. 8. 8. 8. I wrote down before and I was like, I'm going to guess Fred's score. Oh, right. Okay. I was thinking yours maybe went No, I'm 8.4. Okay, cool. But I was like, what's Fred going to guess? Love that you're 8.4. When now we have both watched this before, I'm pretty sure I showed you it and you were middling. Kind of here and all there a little but bit. Eight is great, as everyone knows. 8.4 yes. is a stellar film, so yeah. taught me. I, I tell you what really blew me away this time was I, I understood just how how adventurous in a good way the editing was it was mm. so exciting like every single 30 seconds was just like yeah sweet they were like they were, if it was a phone conversation there were two people on the screen it, the, I, one of the other things as well in addition to that was that it was it felt it has 85 million dollar budget mm. and it felt understated in all the right ways but then when it needed to, the CGI and the special effects and everything actually felt really high budget in a really good way. Yeah. And I just thought it worked so well. Yeah, there so. are examples without going in. I mean, it's very minor spoilers, to be honest, but there are examples of really well done practical effects, which will have obviously saved a bit on that, that front. And yes. by skimping in those areas, as you say, some of the major CGI fights and sequences do really live up to not only the, the budget, but also the aesthetic of the the comic slash video gamey vibe it really is like well how much do you know about the history of video game films not very much well i don't i can't pretend i'm an expert but i do know that it is like miss after miss after miss there was a hitman one right hitman um what's the one which is has hadouken in you know there's there's two uh, street fighter or something street right. fighter right have they done hitman's, a film of that have yeah, they yeah. right and, okay. and like, they have been terrible throughout the years okay. is it resident evil maybe has had one as well you know what yes yeah and yeah. then like Can pan uh, Sonic, the, the, the Warcraft one recently which didn't do that well. Sonic, I did think, okay. did all did all right. But they had the whole thing with the uncanny valley face. Do yeah, you remember that? yeah. So this actually came out at a time where no video game films, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. don't do well. And it isn't from a video game; it's from a comic book originally. Yes. However, it really does justice to like interpreting a video game onto film and making it work for me it really works yeah it was so good i tell you one of the interesting we're not going to do it as a segment but I, it was an interesting thought that occurred to me was does this style of editing uh, in particular visually but just broadly mm. could you ever make a serious film a not comedy with this style of filmmaking would it work well his visual style is so idiosyncratic, isn't it? Edgar Wright, I mean. So the Cornetto trilogy doesn't use any of this comic book stuff, right? No, but like the quick cuts and the visual jokes, the, the yeah, gags. Yeah, okay. It almost is an enhanced version of that. It's, it's basically, I always viewed it as a bigger budget version of the jokes that he likes making anyway. Right, I get that. And I, I think it's like... actually the best. We'll go into it a bit when we discuss the where it stacks against his best work. Yeah. But in terms of visual um, comedy, at least, yeah, I think it's right. I'd, I'd probably say up there as the best. Yeah, because he's just really having fun with it and playing about with with the Damn gags, right. with the edits. Um, but it is an extension of what he already does. That's his style. Right, yeah. And it always has okay. been since based. Um, it, it worked so well. Yeah, and it's perfect. It's almost like he had the perfect setting for this. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how much you know about the production of this, but everyone was so excited about it. Like the marketers at Universal were really gassed to have someone as exciting and innovative as Edgar Wright doing right. a film that basically let him run free. Uh, and all the cast have said it's like their favorite film they've ever worked on. Right, okay. And they've had an email chain 
going since it <laughs> since it finished, which they still like, they still talk like on. talk oh, on. Um, and it just didn't do well <laughs> critically. It just no, it's right. not critically commercially. It just didn't do well. It just came and went. I okay. I I have a a bit of a theory on this. Is I think that we are a good target market for this yeah. style of film, but I can see members of my family not just not liking this but really not getting it like really not getting it and and in several areas the visuals but also the humor for example humor can be very like one thing that you might find the funniest thing ever could be not funny at all to somebody else and i reckon that there is a you can i can see why it's become a cult thing do you know what i mean i can see a lot of people i know saying I just don't get this film at all. We'll talk about what makes a cult film a bit later, but something that I am going to bring up there is how it's some... I'm, I'm trying to word this right. It it needs to have an element of being esoteric and being something that not everyone can get involved yeah, in. But I those agree. who do appreciate it even more for that because yes. it speaks to them. Yeah. And this does that i mean you feel like because you're so bought into the style of story jokes and presentation and cast and everything you like about this film also yeah. everything i love about this film that you forgive it for <laughs> any any problems that it does have which it does in my opinion have a few but you have to i have to work for finding them yeah because okay. i'm i'm so it, it speaks to me so much okay so uh 8.8 .8 obviously is 8.7 8.7 8 sorry mm -hmm. It's still very, very, very high, but mm. it's not the highest you've done. Yeah. What were those things that kind of stopped it from... So this going into... You know, I said to you, um, let's do Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Yes. I don't even think I need to rewatch it. and I know what my score was. Oh, okay. What do you reckon? It went down? It did go down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any ideas as to what you think it might have got into? Uh, what it might have been before. What, yeah, or? did you have any ideas when I said, I know what score I, I think I'll give it? Uh, what I, were you thinking? Well, I I guessed 8.8 .8 for you. Yeah. And I, and I was teetering above that mm. because I know that this film is important to you. Yeah. But it's insanely rare for a film to break nine. For us like we've watched some of the greatest films of all time for this yeah. and they still don't often break nine and so mm -hmm. i was like i can see harry Potter in this just short of the fred yeah. sorry for anyone listening <laughs> <laughs> nine is a, a real kind of yeah that's 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 we got like jaws above ceiling, i don't it? even know if it got reaction got above nine for jaws, jaws jaws just got nine yeah well so. the the re-watching it i thought okay there are a few things wrong that i do forgive this for so Pacing, and I'm um, not really pacing climax. I'd, I'd say so okay. without going too much into the plot for anyone who hasn't seen this. I would thoroughly recommend you watch it. Absolutely. If, yeah. if you like, if you like kind of indie, sub, uh, indie out there comedies, which are atypical. Let's say, or well, you just want to try some. Just You've watch it. See, see it it's different. You got to know going yeah, in. It's definitely. different, but I would recommend. It yeah, broadly. for sure. Um. I think that up to a certain point in the narrative, it is exceptional. Like, they set up a concept. Yeah. It's a pretty easy. So he's, he's versus the world. He's fighting a series of people. Yeah. Uh, and up to a certain point, I think it's hit, 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 hit. It's unbelievable. Oh, okay. And then I think the last one or two, not that it's rushed, but it kind of feels like it's dragging a bit at that point. Yeah, it loses a bit of impact, doesn't it? I actually said that it both felt like rushed and dragging at the same time. Like, yeah, it just I feels like I mean. okay, and that the ending is a tiny bit anticlimactic, not just for the whole final fight sequences, but then they they do like a subverted expectations final opponent, which yeah. to, they, is a bit of a, a wet fart at the end. Um, then thematically, so I felt like there were kind of mixed messages. So the self-respect and th there's there's kind of a theme of having your own, you know, personal change, personal growth. Yeah. Um, which felt maybe a bit not out of the blue. It wasn't that set up though. No, the he can't. They they 
No, they do an all right job of it, but they don't do an exceptional job yes. of it. So that's what... 8.7. Yeah, for to sure. To reiterate, Still we, we're going to work on qualitative descriptions broadly, but 8.7 is very, very high. Yeah. Like, that's... You don't... We don't often give those out. And, um, and But the the, 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 la- the ending did fizzle out a little bit, I yeah. think. Yeah. And, and then finally, so I've put audience appeal. We mentioned how it can be, you know, it's not for everyone. Yeah. And I found myself forgiving things. So like certain lines or certain dialogue bits, which I was like, that's brilliant originally. And really, I'm like, that's not that good. Okay. I, just, I just think because there's so much that's amazing about this that I will think that everything, the sun shines out the arse of every yes. part of this, this film. And that's not the case. Yeah. So it did mark it down a tiny bit. Some of the things that uh, the sun does shine out of its arse for, mm-hmm. soundtrack. Unbelievable. I <laughs> Quality. That Black Sheep song. I've listened to it. Oh, I think God. I probably listened to about six. We, I watched this film yesterday, and I've listened to the Black Sheep song, which Brie Larson's character sings. Oh, and her version is... So cool. I mean, both versions are just unbelievable. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've listened to that probably 10 times. I, I thought that the editing wasn't just visually interesting, but actually it was from the minute the film started to the end, at the very least, mm. it was so energetic and dynamic. Like every single 30 seconds, it was just moving around. It was just jumping about. Yeah. It, was, it felt really, really energetic. Michael Sarah. Mm. We said this on the Super casting, episode. Casting across the board. Chris for Evans is, is quality. Chris, yeah. I'll tell you what I was thinking. I never really appreciated how Chris Evans does... Goody Two Shoes, yeah. Captain America, and then deadpan comedy Scott Pilgrim, and then there was something else. Oh, like the Knives Out kind of like yeah. smidey bag. I was like, you know what? None of them really blew me away, but they are quite different to each other. Yeah, yeah. He's just like great. At, it just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. Whatever yeah, he's doing. Yeah, he Men want brilliant. to be him. Women want to be with him. Yes, exactly. Um, romance story. Okay, I'm not going to spoil anything at all, but the ending did feel a bit confused to me. Yeah. I And we we'll will go, go into that later in the episode if you're interested, but there is a specific reason for that, and I wondered whether maybe I noticed it a lot more. I know it's a lot more now that we do this podcast than I ever used to. Yeah. But I did wonder if maybe I just felt like it was confused because I was aware that there was actually some confusion around the ending in the production. And so when I was watching it, I was like, yeah, I can see that. Because mm. I don't remember noticing it before. But equally, it did feel like whether whatever caused me to notice it, it did feel confused at the end. You know what? It is what I think. Because a lot of our gripes seem to be basically the last 20 minutes. Yeah. 20 minutes, half an hour. The film is two hours long. This could be one of those 90-minute belters, couldn't it? Oh, it could have been, Like, yeah. even the way we it speak about the been. editing and the drive of the film, how it keeps it, like, really high energy. Mm-hmm. Maybe that even re- kind of corresponds to it fizzling out a bit. Like, Because yeah. you do feel like you're like, whoa, whoa, next, 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 next. And then the last one is kind of like, jeez, all right, here we go. One more. Let's go on. Let's get hyped. Whereas, yes, if they maybe cut off a couple of bits in the middle. Yes. Even though they're great. I, I totally agree. I this think could be I, one of the 90 minute belters of all time. If we were going to, so he, I mean, we won't have, we haven't prepared this in tons of detail, but we talk a lot about things that you might change about movies. I feel like maybe the thing that would potentially improve this movie is having a, a slightly stricter cutting part of the editing process and trying to make this because you think about the content the jokes the whole film it really does feel like it should be a 90 minute film yeah maybe a hundred but like that film feels right at 90 yeah. minutes and two hours so we, i think it's 150 right i think it's one hour 50 yeah yeah it's but it's like knocking on two you hours, could you it? could take a bit take, off take a and bit it off would, would probably help the film out it is one of those white whale close to perfect films that we discuss yeah I it agree. just needs a bit off it and it'll be it'll be there um okay well we've we've slightly overrun so we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the 8.7 8.4 into the patented mate night formula never wrong which you're not going to know about <laughs> unless you're listening to the long form. <laughs> Secret. <laughs> uh, no, but we will we will put the 8.7 and the 8.4 into the Maynight formula and we will come out with a score which you will agree with. If you do, like and subscribe. If you don't, 
Let us know in the comments. Nice. Um, we're we'll, going to just we'll go see you away. In a minute. We're going to go away and come back with a number that most all of you will agree on. Everybody. <laughs> all right. Okay, let's right, go. Let's Plast it. Welcome back, YouTube audience. We have gone away. We have twiddled some no knobs. We've, <laughs> we've, did, we've he poured, certainly we've did poured, not. <laughs> poured, some, poured some chemicals into bottles. Yes. And we have used our patented Never Wrong Mate Night formula to determine the final score for Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Uh, starting off with an 8.7 out of 10 for Fred's gut reaction. Truly subjective. That's just how much the man enjoyed it. Uh, I gave it an 8.4 for the enjoyment. And then we fiddled some buttons. Put it in the function. Put it in the mate night AI that we've, that we've programmed. And what did we get for critical score overall? 8.57 out of 10, which makes it the eighth greatest film of all time. Until further notice. <laughs>